and congratulations for nice to meet you. I'm really pleased to meet you as well, Nicole. Um, congratulations on your MBA. Thank you for that. Um, what does it exactly mean to get an MBA? Um, I guess it, it, it's, 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 it's an award and uh, for uh, services um, to in the community in, in planning in my particular circumstances. Um, it was it was an honour to, to receive it. Certainly unexpected. Um, and um, I know that uh, people have different views around um, these sorts of awards, but uh, certainly from, from, from my perspective, I, I took it as being something that was um, recognising my contribution, but from in my own terms, it was also about recognising the support that I'd had from my family and my friends yeah. and others that helped me to uh, sort of have a career in planning and, uh, and a successful one as well. So Nicole, I think you said that um, you came to planning in 2017, is that right? Yeah, so I graduated from Sheffield in 2017 and then my first job was at Westminster Council as an enforcement officer. Ah, so what was that like? What was, what was it like on day one then? <laughs> Your impressions? Um, I liked Westminster Council, they're very nice too. Um, actually, so my, my line manager was actually a black female and then the uh-huh. head of the team uh-huh. um, was this uh, South African man. They were really, really lovely. They were very good um, man- managers. And the council is actually very, very diverse, particularly like Westminster Council. Um, within the planning team, um, there were loads of black people, but there were some. But throughout the council, you actually did see quite a lot of black people. So, some of the lawyers were black, then um, the people who were working, because in the council it's like all the services, people work in education, people work in housing, people work in like, um, the, like, the, like the streets, so like making the streets, the environmental health. So it was quite diverse in that aspect. And because I was in enforcement, I was dealing with a lot of short term letting. So that's, that's a big problem. <laughs> so you did mix with all these different types of people but um it was good i just i ended up leaving after a year because i wanted to go into a planning consultancy and try something and right. a bit more i felt like i needed to learn more okay um so i went to a consultancy in manchester uh called acom right. and it was very different there yeah it was very very different there <laughs> it was very male dominated right um it was very white male dominated as well um, um, I did I did learn a lot there though. I feel like consultancy is very very good for learning, but right. it's not very diverse. Okay, yeah. it's very different to to to, to my experience though, going back to the uh, the early eighties. Um, and, and to be honest, the the, the private consultancy um, mm-hmm. side of, of planning wasn't particularly well developed, and the, the, the oh, really? it wasn't the sort of range of opportunities. So, so who did you? Um, who did the so when you were on the council, who applied to the council? There were a few. There were a few, but um, they were they were nowhere near the size or the um, um or the, the reach that they that uh, the okay. sector has now. And certainly it was very unusual for somebody with a just you know, sort of a couple of years experience mm. under their belt to get a role in the private sector. Oh, okay. um, it was, you know, dare I say it was a place where people went after they retired. <laughs> <laughs> um but, um, but yeah, um, when I went into, into planning, it was very, very different. Um, I certainly was the only black planner mm. in, in, uh, in, in my service when I first started. In fairness, it, um, it changed. There was a kind of a, 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 a gradual, but, you know, sort of consistent change. Mm-hmm. Um, in the uh, the ethnic makeup, but also in the um, um, the, the, the proportions of male to female mm-hmm. um, planners, it was very much a, um, um, a white middle class profession yeah. when I joined. Yeah. Um, but it, it started that first diversifying towards the back end of the um, the eighties, I think, and you know, sort of I had female managers and uh, worked alongside um, women. Um, the number of um, black planners that I worked with sort of started to to to, in, to increase, and I know so when I first started, I thought, oh, "Gosh, this is this is a bit weird." <laughs> um, 
But um, what what surprised me is that um, you know we I worked for what back then was being called, they used to call them the Living Death Councils. Um, and um, but you know, sort of in a way, um, from from my background, being that type of council was actually attractive because I knew that in the recruitment process yeah. they had at least a half a fair chance yeah. of their role. Yeah. Um, so what I noticed was that over um, you know, so probably the next five years or so that I was there, that gradually more and more people were coming into um, into planning from more diverse backgrounds. And so when I went to, to, to Hackney, there was um, there were a lot of um, um, young black, Asian, um, Turkish, Greek, mm -hmm. young people all working in the department. But as professional planners, um, it was very, very sort of mono, ethnic, mm -hmm. monocultural. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, so there was, you, you, you definitely felt as though, you know, so you, you were on, on your own in that respect. What was particularly encouraging was that um, some of the people that joined it over the time that I, I was there um, were highly experienced people. Um, and I, I started to see, you, you, when you're in these situations, you get into a bit, bit of a thing where you start to enjoy being the only one. <laughs> um, and um, but but actually being able to to you know so when you wanted to have that conversation that you can only have with somebody who understands where you come from, yeah. what your background is, and the sorts of things that um, that play on your mind and where you, you think you want to get want to get to, when you want to have that conversation, being the only one is not yeah. And so what was um, I, I we we ended up getting a couple of really experienced people from different London authorities. I mean, I'm sure it was just pure serendipity, but they ended up working there as well. Mm -hmm. And certainly it felt as though, you know, that there were people here who understood and who were supportive and who I could support as well. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of start to feel a bit more um, collegiate, shall we say. Yeah. And not so much, you know, you're the person there, but you're a little bit on the outside. Yeah. I feel I feel like it's still the same now. I feel like where I work, there are other black people in other disciplines that you can talk to, but not really in planning. But I'm more in land now. Land is a very different world. Land is explain to me about land. So you work with agents, right. uh, surveyors, people. So um, it's a white worker strategic. So it's mostly like. Farmland, but nice. even immediate, and you know, like you see London redevelopment now. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very, very different world. Often, when I go to events, I am the only one there, um, uh, and I think I see the world a bit differently to the rest of them. Yeah, but I, I feel comfortable in my company to just talk. So, I, I, I will say to people, like, we're all prejudiced, we all have our prejudices, mm -hmm. you just have to be aware of that. Like, I will openly say, I think they think I'm a bit mean, really sometimes. But I feel like you have to, you just have to say that, like, yeah. it's it's sort of, it's not diversity, inclusion, training, but it's just making people aware. We, we, we are all in this, in this world and we all think a certain way, but you have to be aware that you think a certain way. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware that the media is telling you things, and you just have to, like, check yourself and try and not. Be, if you're aware, then you'll be more alert about things. Yeah. And I think. Maybe that's where sometimes the struggle is of being the only one because you're trying to explain to people who don't understand yeah. that you need to be aware of these things because I, I am. Um, when I, after April, I worked at a housing association which I found quite diverse mm -hmm. again. Again, I was like the only um, black female planner, but there were other females and there were other um, people of different ethnic groups in the team and we worked, we worked very well as a team then. So the development team worked mm -hmm. together. So it wasn't just like the planning and the land team technical worked with us. The project management room team worked with us. Like we all worked together and that was very, very diverse. And I think I find that particularly in this industry, councils and housing associations are probably more diverse than when you work for developers and consultancies. Right. I don't know if you've seen that difference as well. Yeah, I think, the, you know, there was a, um, a, 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 I mentioned 
when I first went into you know, the, the, the private sector was wasn't particularly well. Yeah. It was quite um, um, rarefied, and um, it was also like um, like working for MI five. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was to build up with a, with, a, with a consultancy, and you know, which was the way it was. But also, it was one of those things where I was thinking, well, I was seeing people who I've been um, um, working with. And uh, coming into the profession at the same time, they were getting tapped out. I wasn't. Mm. You know, but you, you know, and you kind of realise well, actually, it's the way this 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 thing operates. Yeah. It's the patronage that you that, that some people can rely on that don't even you know think about. Yeah. That comes their way. Yeah. It doesn't come everybody's way. Mm. You know. Um, but that was back in the eighties. I don't. You know. So some of the things you say to me now makes me. It's still concerned. It's still, it's still, it's still, it's still kind of the same. But then I did get, I did to get tapped by my employer. Now they did just message me out the blue and said, "Do you want to come and work for us?" And I was quite happy at the housing association. To be honest, I had a great time there. But I was like, actually, like I, I would like to go there, and I'm, I'm glad I went there. And it just made, it just made me see the sector. Um, the way it is, particularly because land and planning are so interlinked, it's just that it's the same types of people. And not, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like a chameleon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like they have to yeah. change, but I think maybe because of my background, I can change the environments that I'm in. Because you have to change, like if you're with this certain type of people, you have to act this way, if you're with this certain type of people, you have to act this way. Just because we're trying to, I'm trying to do land deals so I can mm. put it through the planning system. So I have to, you know, you sort of have to manage yourself. But then sometimes it's like, I have nothing in common with people. I don't know the world they're from. They're really nice people, but it's just like, I just don't understand that world that they're from. So you get almost like lost in translation sometimes when I'm trying to speak to them. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very thing about planning, though, because you can find yourself in, in situations that you, you would never anticipate mm-hmm. ever being in. You find yourself talking to people who, again, you never anticipate. Yeah. But that's what you need to do in order to do the job and yeah. to move your particular pro- project project on. Um, and you, but, but you need to sort of do it in a way that is respectful of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but also as when you lose yourself in the yeah. in, in the process of yeah. entry. Yeah, true. But I don't think I've ever lost myself. I don't think I would ever lose myself. I think that I'm the cold and that's just how I am. You have a life and you don't because I feel like there were certain institutions I really wanted to work for mm-hmm. and I just would get interviews and I'd never get the job. And I think that I just came to a realisation that Okay, they don't want the call, but I'll go to someone else who does want me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. I feel like maybe now the industry is so big that yes, there are certain institutions that don't want people that look like me, but there are institutions who do. So don't waste your time on people that don't want you. Go and excel in somewhere that does. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's um, you know those institutions who don't want us. Mm-hmm. Um, that's on them. Yeah, and they, you know they lose something. I think they do. Uh, I think they do. Yeah. Because I feel like um, with diversity and inclusion, it's because certain people were from different. So before I lived in Hertfordshire, I lived in Ballon, um, and obviously you lived there in Birmingham and yeah. Leeds, and then you worked in Hackney. And a lot of those institutions do developments there, yeah. but they don't have people there that can relate to. Mm. The people that it's going to affect and could probably help, like speak those people's language, and I think that's what they lose. There's because sometimes I think with communities it's sort of like us and them, and I think that sometimes they need people to bridge. They might hire external organisations to mm. help with bridge, but if you have people from the inside actually, you know, telling people about this, I think it would help yeah. a lot. I know, yeah, that's absolutely being able to be within an organisation um, and to, to bring, you know, your true self to work. Yeah. And, um, you know, so you, you're dealing with situations in a slightly different way mm-hmm. sometime or all the time because in the end, 
we're all planners. We were trained as planners. We are as planners. But there are some, some things that we, we will do or be aware of in a yeah. different way from our, our, our personal experience, I think. Well, so it's been really good speaking to you. And it would be nice that if we could speak again about in a couple of years' time and see where things have elevated again, um, especially with like, your business and working in the area that you do. Yeah, uh, that'd be great. I, 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 I really enjoyed it. Um, our conversation today as well, Nicole. It's uh, great to speak to somebody who's um, just coming into the profession. And, um, you yeah, know, and I'm really pleased to see that our profession is in really safe hands with, um, you know, <laughs> young people like yourself coming through. Um, so I'd be more than happy to, to, meet, to meet with you again to talk about you know, sort of how things have progressed in your terms. Maybe when you're uh, sort of getting on into my sort of age. <laughs>